How's the week been, Morgan? It's been great. Yeah, I mean, obviously, very well done. Uh, you know, it's a big time bowl, and they do a great job of giving our guys the best experience possible. You know, our administration as well has done everything to make sure that the players are enjoying this, right? Two parts of the bowl game is, you know, the game is obviously the most important, but our players enjoying the experience would be a number two. You know, they deserve this, they've earned it, and uh, happy for them. How's the weeks leading up to this, kind of the bowl prep in Salt Lake and here? Yeah, I mean, obviously you don't want them to get stale. So you, you break up the practices, you know, making sure that they, they stay active, uh, that they stay in condition. Uh, Coach Witt has done an, an awesome job throughout the years of understanding what it takes to make sure these guys are fresh uh, as well as in shape when you get to the bowl site. So kind of just standard fare. This group's experience and having been in bowls and played in big games together, does that make the preparation for the game a little bit easier? Because big games and things, stages like this aren't new to them. Yeah, I mean, we're still dealing with a lot of uh, youth on this team. So this is, uh, you know, first time for a lot of guys on this on this team. Uh, some of the vets, obviously, have been, played in some, some big time games throughout the years. And uh, these younger guys, they played the championship game. They played, you know, we, we've had to win throughout the, the season to kind of stay alive and, and to be in contention in the championship. So every game is a big game, but uh, these ones are a little bit more special. Morgan, when you look at your secondary, especially with how thin you are there, I mean, how do you feel that you can, you can kind of combat what Ohio State does? Well, obviously, very talented wide receiving core, very talented offense, period. Um, and... You know, what you see is you've got to do a kind of a, a mixture of things, particularly when we're as thin as we are. You've got to be able to do a mixture of things um, to make the quarterback hold on the ball a little bit longer. So you've got to be great in disguise. Um, you also have to understand your strengths and weaknesses and, and where, you know, we're going to, if we're going to get beat, here's where we're going to get beat, right? Um, but, uh, man, our guys have practiced well, and uh, we're excited for the, uh, the opportunity. Morgan, just to follow that up, um, in terms of depth, to try and help that, have there been any position changes going to uh, the cornerback spot? Well, we've experimented with a bunch of different guys. You know, I, obviously, uh, you've got great athletes that, that come to university, and some have played both sides of the ball. So uh, we've experimented with a number of guys, and uh, you'll see on game day. Anybody that might stick on game day? Uh, no comment. <laughs> Morgan, when you watch C.J. Stroud play, I know you recruited him a little bit out of high school, but this kid's a redshirt freshman and already a Heisman finalist. What stands out about Stroud? Just his decision making. For a young, for a young player, very good decision maker. Uh, gets the ball out quick. Understands when pressure's coming, where to go with the ball. Um, you know, very good athlete. He's looking to throw first, but man, when he takes off, he can run. And uh, he just, he, for as young as he is, like I said, very football savvy quarterback. Comparable to anybody you've seen? Oh, many. I mean, throughout the years, I, I just, uh, I mean, just, Justin Herbert is a guy that, that understood as well coverage and how to attack coverage, uh, giving some pre-snap reads as to what you're doing, where to go with the football, you know, based on what coverage you're in. Um, also dangerous running the ball, so I would say those two. Uh, any sigh of relief for a defensive coordinator when Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave opt out? Not when they're as talented as a, as a team as they are. You know, I mean, obviously they're very talented wide receivers, uh, but they've recruited and they've got depth. And uh, you know, it is, that's that's college football, right? And uh, you just got to keep on coaching your guys, regardless of who's out there. Come with your game plan and uh, play ball. Do you go back and? Look for as much film as you can find on the, the guys stepping in or the, the young guys. Is, is that what we you have, do? Or? We have film on all of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're good. Do you, do you change your schemes at all knowing that those two aren't out there or does it stay the same? How's the, uh, the uh, secondary looking? I, I know, especially at corner, you guys, you guys have been banged up. Mm -hmm. Is there, you know, is, is there a especially having these extra practices? I know you guys have said in the past it's very beneficial. 
Oh, beneficial for your down the line guys as well. Guys that have redshirted or plan on redshirting, getting those extra reps in. It's almost like another spring ball for us, right? Being able to get those guys reps. Um, and again, you know, it's it's no secret. We've, we've had to experiment with guys, you know, um, you know, playing a little bit of quarter that have to see us play there, but that's that. You know, we've done that with safeties, right? We played our, our three safety scheme for a good amount of the season, and uh, you know that's definitely something that we've had in practice throughout the season. And, and so, you know, uh, we'll have that as well. I, I asked Kyle this, and this also applies to you. Having played in the the Fiesta Bowl, the first season of the Sugar Bowl, and now you're in this week. Is there a, a different feel as far as the build up to this game compared to the Sugar Bowl Fiesta Bowl? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I guess, you know, the Sugar the Fiesta Bowl was one of those deals where you're the first team to, to bust the BCS, so different feel there. Um, the Sugar Bowl, you know, I think just the matchup people didn't anticipate uh, Utah doing much, right? And I, but I think with this matchup, you got two teams very well respected. They respect each other, and maybe that's the feel is that you're – we're going into it with the mutual respect and, and everyone anticipates it. Morgan, um, Kyle has said that this is one of the toughest seasons of his career for obvious reasons, but then on the flip side of that, he said that uh, he's having more fun now than he has in a long time. Do you get the sense that, he, that he's having fun? As much fun as he can have, <laughs> I guess. Hey, you know, you see one side of Kyle right here. And uh, he's an unbelievable person. Yeah, he loves the players. He, he is a very player-first oriented coach who wants to make sure that they're the ones getting the praise. They're the ones having fun. They're the ones enjoying it. And um, that's where he gets, you know, his fulfillment. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, a ton of it for him because of what the players have gone through and the success that they're seeing and, and having. So he's he's a good man. You guys do that success. Four or five star guys maybe making position changes, developing and developing them over the years. What do you what do you see in guys like that that maybe others don't see when you're out there? Well, I think that just the continuity of, of being at the same place every year, uh, playing the same defense, and you get a feel for you know that type of athlete that fits your scheme, right? And you, then you become more confident in your ability. Okay, here's the skill set we're looking for, and then you have to have confidence that you can develop that skill set. Um, and you know, Coach Whittingham's whole philosophy in our program is recruit, develop, and manage. And so you've got to recruit the people to your program that you feel can will, will be a good fit. Number two has the skill set that you can develop into into a, into a Pac-12 player, and then you know just take care of them, give them the tools they need to succeed, uh, teach, hold them accountable. Uh, it's it's a Kyle Whittingham deal. Is that how much you know, you know, it's been a very impatient year? I mean, how much, I know. Patience does it, how much patience does it require, not only the players, but the coaches? Well, no, no, but we, we have to have patience. You know, Utah is, is very well respected, and we've, we've spent a number of years earning that respect. Um, we're still not a destination program, according to the rest of the country, and we have to be able to, to develop it. Right? And then the transfer portal, we're going to take our fair share of kids from the transfer portal, but you also will never lose sight of, of that high school senior that maybe this was his first year starting as a senior, right? I lived in Houston, Texas, and they get so much depth there that you get these kids that go into the program, that's waiting their time, and then they develop their senior year. And we've had a ton of success with those kids and, and developing them, and we'll continue to do that. Morgan, not necessarily something related to the Rose Bowl, but apparently you kind of had a viral moment on Monday. I don't know if you saw any of this, where uh, you were at Disneyland and you apparently FaceTimed Kalani to show BYU fans. I mean, can you just kind of talk about that relationship and just kind of your, you know, your willingness to kind of help some people out? Oh, he's he's a good dude. Kalani and I will always remain friends. We stay in contact. It's, you know, all the time, and, and uh, had a, a young man in line, great family that we, we started talking to, and uh, so I FaceTimed with Kalani, and, you know, I was able to have him talk to that kid, that's a special moment for him, and that's something that Kalani 
love to be on this is that, so is that kind of just trying to transcend some of the game obviously the focus is Rose Bowl and all that stuff but those moments do you kind of look for those moments oh yeah you know it's, it's listen uh, just be a good, a good person you know what I mean and uh, they were great I mean, we stood in line and, and, uh, and we talked for a minute and uh yeah. Thanks, Mark. You got it. I don't know. I think I think both teams pride themselves. In the and both teams pride themselves in, in doing it the right way. And uh, I think we, we probably have a lot more in common than we need to have differences. Uh, it's just that, you know, we're on separate sides of the country. And one's obviously a lot more of a steam program. And one's still trying to continue to earn that respect. Well, he's a great young man. And you know, Clark chose to come here because he felt like this was an environment where he could thrive and he succeed and uh, it just as, as he committed to, to Ohio State it was just I think a coaching change and that's the, the reason there but uh, unbelievable young man huge addition to our program and uh, it's fun to watch him succeed you remember the first time on the practice field or whenever it was you know, the first time the boys kind of did something to make you guys look at each other and say hey this guy might be a little better I, I think it was a Oregon State game Either a so I think it was a sophomore year. Sophomore year, tip the interception, so he took it to the house where we're kind of like, okay, geez, yeah, you know, he can do it. So, um, that is, a, I mean, if you haven't talked to this kid already, he's an unbelievable young man. The best leader we've ever had in this program, uh, humble, and uh, he's going to he's gonna have a ton of success in the next level. Well, he was a, he was a wide receiver uh, DB in high school. And, you know, he had long levers, he had, he had broad shoulders. We knew he was going to grow into his body. Again, that skill set kind of that you're looking for, right? Um, and we knew we could you know, take that, that, that talent as well as his mindset. The mindset is a big part of it, too. And, uh, and develop it into a very good fashion. And Colton Swan, Justin, and the guys in the post did an amazing job. As well as the players in the room. He's, he's, he's grown up with some very good linebackers in that room, kind of teaching them how to study film and how to prepare for a game. So. Well, they got dudes behind them that are really good. You know, and that's they 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 recruit for that, right? Um, I think the you know biggest challenge is they do a, a very good job of mixing the tempo, right? And you you know usually your tempo teams they're pretty predictable when they go tempo tempo they're play set, right? Uh, these guys have a, a variety of plays when they go tempo, so that's that's uh, one of the challenges in this game, as well as just matching up. With the yeah, I mean, USC has always had a wide receiver core that, that uh, has challenged. Uh, you know, Washington, Washington State is much more pass heavy than, uh, than Ohio State, but um, I mean, this is a big time program that, that uh, I mean, they're sitting there ranked in the top four throughout the season. They're, they're talented for a reason, they win games for a reason. Uh, you don't always face that throughout the year. I mean, you're going to face one or two teams that bring that same level of talent, and, and this is one of them. So this is a huge uh, opportunity for us. Thank you. Sort of the uh, coordinator's chess match that goes on, when you see a team have success, like Michigan did, kind of interrupting Ohio State, but you also know Ohio State's been working on this, like how to right. plug that off for the last month. How do you then approach that as a coordinator? Probably trying to like replicate that, but then also get staying in Well, I think the, you know, the challenge in bowl games is you got so much time to maybe think that you got to do a bunch of different stuff. And so sometimes you diverge away from what got you here. And uh, 
you know, we have to continue to be who we are as defense. Um, obviously, there's going to be some wrinkles here and there that, that you show. But in a, you know, 70 to, to 90, you know, hopefully not 90, but plays in a game, you know, there's only so much you can really change. Um, it's going to come down to fundamentals of the technique, in my opinion. That and just sheer toughness. Both teams are going to want it. Both teams are, are physical. And, uh, you know, it's we've got to do a great job with the wrinkles that we have, not diverging away from tackling properly and running the football. So. Coach, when there's two receivers out, like there will be for Ohio State, you mentioned other talent coming in, but not as much film of those guys. How do you prepare for receivers that you haven't seen as much in a game? Well, I think you just have to go with, you know, what are their past concepts? You know, what do they do? What shows up every game? You know, what are their go-tos? Bottom line. Um, you know, we do run some, you know, uh, man coverage, quite a bit of man coverage, man pressure. And so, you know, the film that you do have, you just kind of have to, have to get a feel for what's their strength, uh, how do we defend them, how do they how do they handle press coverage. Uh, there's just certain things there that, that you try and key in on. Otherwise, it's all about who they are as an offense. They're going to have their wrinkles. They're going to have stuff that we haven't seen before, right? And so it's just adjusting on the fly. Morgan, how big was it for you guys as a program when you guys were able to Well, I think any any time you can get um, you know the quality of talent that, that Clark provides in your program, it's it's you know it's a great victory, right? But at the same time. Um, it's an in, recruiting is an inexact science. Sometimes you got a guy that he's a highly rated guy. He comes in. It takes a little bit of time to develop, right? Uh, some guys are big time surprises, right? Some guys come in and. You know, Cole Bishop's one of those guys for us, or, or uh, Strong Safety, came in. Uh, we were excited about his film, but if you were to say he's going to come in and he's going to be a year one starter, uh, think of it, you know, mid year transfer, true freshman. You're like, wow, all right, awesome. So it's an inexact science, but that young man is unbelievable. You know, some freshmen come in and they're, they just kind of sit there and try and follow the crowd. And you know, he came in with a purpose. Uh, he wanted to start. He wanted to play right away. He's always in the film room. Um, he's his own man, uh, and I love that. Do you think it, you know, sends a message to other recruits when a guy of his caliber flips from a program like Ohio State to Utah? That hey, I mean, Utah's a place where you guys should consider. Well, I definitely puts Utah in a position where, where people start asking those questions, right? Jalen Johnson was, a, was another one of those guys for us. A uh, highly recruited kid out of California, playing with the Bears right now, and he's a starter at the corner spot. Um, but usually the young men that are serious about it and ask the questions and come visit Salt Lake City end up with Number two, Chris Olave opted out for Ohio State, yet yeah, he's out there still practicing with the team. Would you be, I know you say you prepare for concepts and things and as much as personnel. Would you be shocked if, if Chris Olave took a snap? I don't get shocked. <laughs> Prepare for everything, you know. And uh, he's a very talented athlete. He recruited Chris out of high school. Um, unbelievable talent. The fact that he's out there just is again it's a testament to him. he's a football player, right? He, he's he's out there. He's try, still trying to get better, and uh, wish him nothing but the best. Man, master motivator. You know, uh, you know, he came to our program from Bowling Green, and the you know first team meeting. We were we were a team that had just come off a of five and seven season. And he sat down. And he said, you know, there's only really six or eight teams in, in the country that, that do things right. You know, you're going to be one of those teams, and uh, I'm sure there were a lot of people kind of doubted that. And then within two years, turned the program around. He just he found a way to motivate people to do their job, right? Even if it was you were running down on kickoff, he made that guy feel like the most important person on the team, right? He was able to connect, you know, in a way with, with, with those players to just get them to own their role, right? And so uh, I'm, I'm grateful for my time with Urban, you know, what I learned from him, uh, not only uh, on the field, but off. Over the years, past years, when Ohio State had an offensive coordinator open and your name has come up, I don't know if that's been speculation or there's any fire to that smoke, but is it appropriate that you kept an eye on 
Uh, I love Utah. I'm not asking if you want the job. No, 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 and I know that. I know that. Uh, if it up to me, I'd be here uh, my entire career. Does did anything with Urban's success, Florida, Ohio State, surprise you at all? Given what he was able to do with you guys at, at Utah? Oh uh, no. Again, you know, I, I just uh, ultra competitive, right? But, but he, he connected with the players on a level that, that made you like want to run through a wall for him, right? And I, I get that not every, you know, not every player is going to love a coach, yeah. you know. Um, but he was successful for a reason, right? and uh, that was our experience with him. You know, I think. It, it, Depending on where he, he went, everyone's going to have their different experience with Urban. Our experience with Urban, so at least my experience with Urban, because there, there are you know, guys on the team that have opinions themselves. But um, I just thought he, he, he ran the program to a point where you felt like you could compete with anybody. You try to instill that with your guys now? Well, I think they've experienced that. You know, I think they've experienced that, and so now it's just a matter of you know, we are a Power Five team. And there's that there's that transition, right, going from the Mountain West Conference to, to the Pac-12, and gaining that confidence throughout the years that not only can you compete, but you can win, and you can win consistently. Kyle, Kyle Whittingham has done an amazing job of creating a culture at Utah that has allowed these young men to thrive. Uh, and, and now, having won the championship, and it's just a matter of, you know, here's how we did it. Believe it, trust it, let's keep on going. Do you look at a, a Oregon film when Ohio State played early in the season as a, you know, you played Oregon twice, you know Oregon well, see what all they did against Ohio State that worked? I mean, does that kind of cross over? You're looking at everyone that did something that worked. <laughs> right. You know, and even still, Ohio State scored 28 points against right. them. And it's not like they didn't work in Ohio State, these guys, very efficient offense. They score points. And it's, you can keep them down, but then they score points in a hurry, right? Uh, very efficient deep, deep ball thrower, which allows you to score points in a hurry when you've got those wideouts and you've got that ability to connect down the field. So, you know, I think the biggest key for us is limiting those big plays. When we can limit those big plays and, and find a way to take the ball away, that's one thing I don't think we've done a good enough job of uh, this season, in, in, recent seasons, in recent seasons, is just taking the ball away, so that's got to be a big emphasis for our guys. Is a field goal a win? Say that again. Is a field goal a win? Is a field goal a win? You bet. You know, I much rather have them kicking field goals. But in all seriousness, like, is that? We tell our guys, we, you know, when you look at red red zone defense, we don't care about field goals. That's you know, no touchdown touch scores that you looked at, right? Touchdown scored. You know, as long as you're you're not. Field goals should not beat you. Ohio State's offense is at times when they've gotten in that red zone and the not finishing with touchdowns and, and kicking some field goals. Do you see any, like, I don't know, when you watch film, like what's kind of like yelled them in that area or something that they've... Really not a strong tendency one way, one way or the other there. You know, um, they'll change a little bit of who they are down the red zone. Some teams have, have a specific red zone package. These guys don't change much. They keep the tempo... They keep going. It's just once you shorten down that space, those route concepts, you know, your deeper route concepts are not as applicable. Uh, you can use that end line as an extra defender. So it's a little bit harder to, to fit those balls in the um, I've, you know, Someone asked that question earlier, and it was, uh, Ohio, or it was Oregon State. We played Oregon State on the road, I think, in 2019, and he had a tipped interception and uh, took it all the way to the house. Um, you know, that was his first significant time. And he's always been a guy that he wears you out by coming into your office, right? Coach, what can I work on? What can I work on? How can I get better? It's like Devin. 
okay, enough. It just wears you out, right? But that's that's who he is, and that's why he's gotten to this point. He's always looking for ways to improve, always looking for ways to add value and get better. He grew up in a room with some very good leaders, Chase Hansen, Cole Barton, Francis Bernard, who taught him how to study film, you know, taught him how to treat the game as a, as a professional. And uh, he, he has become just as much, if not a, a you know, I mean, match those guys in terms of leadership, if not exceeded that. He, he, he is compelling. He brings guys along, um, takes the younger guys, and, you know, instead of, hey, scrubs, you guys, you know, you wait your turn. No, he, he's out there practicing. He brings them to the film and teaches them. Um, I can't overstate what a blessing he has been to us. You get to use him as a weapon that in whatever way you need him to get around.